Good evening. I'd like to call the Tuesday, November 6, 2018, City of Oldsmar meeting, City Council meeting to order. We also tonight have Brownie Troop 31815 and Daisy Troop 31835. If you girls will come up here, we're going to do our invocation and then you can lead us in our pledge. So if we can get the two troops to line up in front of the podium from oh, one side and face and face the flag back there by the podium. Over here. Right here. And you can come all the way across pretty far. All the way across this way. And you're on camera, see? Look at, look at that. And then we will lead our, our invocation. We'll be led by our city attorney, Mr. Tom Trask. Heavenly Father, we ask for your special blessing as Veterans Day approaches. We also pray this evening for the members of our armed forces serving abroad. We ask for their safety and that they are returned to their homes and loved ones as soon as their duties permit. Give comfort to their families and friends in their absence and help us remember the sacrifices that they are making. This we pray. Amen. 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 Now we'll do the pledge. We'll turn around and whenever you girls are ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Got some strong voices, yeah. voices out here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Who, they were loud. One of you was a speed demon. <laughs> I think that was the best. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, thank you uh, for coming, girls. I'm glad to have you here. Um, sometimes we, depending on how late you stay, sometimes we promise that we might get into a fight up here, but so far tonight, we're not going to get into one, so you girls don't get one, we'll be all good. The deputy's in the back to keep the order, so uh, anyway, thank you. Uh, one that causes trouble is him. As me. That's it. We, and we know it's election night, so we're trying to get everybody out of here as quickly as we can. Hopefully, you went out and voted. Um, so uh, our first item tonight is the Citizens Open Forum. We only have a couple of questions that you state your name and address clearly for the record. If you're one of the Girl Scout troops, you don't need to state your address for the record. Um, also, that you keep it to no more than five minutes. And you can speak towards anything on the agenda. However, if you're talking about agenda items 9 and 10, those are public hearing items. And we'll ask that you hold your comments on those items until we get to them on the agenda. Having said that, we'll start on this side. And I've been told that one of you girls or a couple of you girls are Coming up to the podium right there. Pull, you can pull that red mic down towards you a little bit. We can almost see your eyeballs. What? 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 Yeah. Hi, my name is Sarah Felt, and I live on 207 Fairfield Street in Oldsmar. I'm a Brownie Girl Scout troop in Troop 1815. We meet at the Oldsmar Fire Station. We would like to ask to cost the rent to the shelter at the preserve to waive for an event. Event for our Girl Scouts to celebrate Thinking Day, where we learn about Girl Scouts all around the world. We would like to have our event on February 9th or February 10th. Hi, my name is Grace. I live on 1721 Slip Fork Drive, Oldsmar, I am an, I am a Girl Scout Troop 1815. We, we will be doing a community service project at the park to clean up. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Um, I'm sure one of the parents has. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, you're going to sign it tonight? Does this have all the information on it? It does. It has a, it's the same. It's just multiple copies, so everybody's got it. Okay. And what we'll do is we have a normal process that we do through this, and I think we have enough time. Is that right? So it's February 9th or 10th to send it through the process? I don't know. And, and see what we can do. But I don't, I don't think it'll be a problem, but we just there's a process that we have to do. So I will give this to our clerk. Do you have her contact information? I do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, girls, for coming. Thank you. 
can hang out for a while. We might get into a fight. <laughs> no. No? <laughs> uh, for the next item on the agenda, oh, sorry, any other citizens wish to speak to the council? Citizens Open Forum on that side? Oh, yeah, Tom? I texted you your answer, by the way, too, unless. Oh, you did? That's right, come on. Come on up. I'll, he right, wants yeah. to show off that he's a West Virginia fan. <laughs> hey, 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 don't be a hater. Um, <laughs> you want to move? Are we going to have some assistance? Move system? the mic up from your belly button. Move the mic up. <laughs> now, why you got to be like that? Girls <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. are laughing at you. Lord, look at purple. <laughs> She's got to be up there. Um, will we have some assistance to clean up? Yep. The Arlington East and the answer to the question is we had to send it out for bid uh, to one of our contractors, LJ Tucker Enterprises, who's oh, an Tucker. Ultima resident. Uh, we got the our, our savior, our savior for the hurricane, and we did uh, it today. So we, we got it today. It'll be out this week. Okay, no worries. Just it'll be just, next day. Or just two. a question. And if not, you can get out there and clean it up. <laughs> he won't. And it's important it. to notify. He's not going on anybody's property. So as long as if you put out what you have on the right away on the right away side of the sidewalk, he'll pick it up. It's so right right there. Okay. No worries. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. And you and your goofy shorts. No mountaineers. <laughs> Anybody else on this side of the room? I see a hand. Oh, now you got to come up. <laughs> no. No. Oh, okay. She's like, can you get this thing over already? Anybody on this side of the room like to address? Yep. Ginger. I can't get that over. Hey, Ginger Tadaseski, 303 Park Boulevard. I'd like to start by thanking Gator and Judy for coming tonight. We yeah. miss you guys. Well, at least Judy, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hey, um, it's sort of an old problem. Gabby brought it up a while ago when you were out walking and you found the lost lady. Oh, yeah. Um, but with Halloween and the time change, it is become it is so dark on Park Boulevard. You can't see to walk. And it's just, it's not safe. I walk out in the street if I have to walk. And a wise man once told me, if you're going to a superior with a problem, you should have a solution. Well, I don't other than putting lights up, which I know costs money, but I just want to make you guys, it's still the same problem. I don't know whether that project that we looked at from USF is in the works um, with the median all being taken care of, but it would be nice to have lights in the median. Those are, I think those are Tico, aren't they, Al? Lights? They own them, yeah. Yeah. But I'll take them. More. We just need more lights. There's yeah. just not enough. It yeah. is it is really Apple dark. Area, Dartmouth, Buckingham, yeah. really dark at night. Really yeah. dark, yeah. Okay. I, I have a solution for anybody that wants to try it. Tico will put up a light for you and it'll cost you about six dollars a month. I have two lights that I've had in my my yard for fifty years. You talking about street lights or the kind you buy talking at Lowe's? Street lights. Yeah. Okay. I will call them and ask them. But yeah, it's just really dark there. So. I have the number if you want. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll get it to you. I'll, I'm going to tell you something. My whole my whole yard is just lit. Right there. <laughs> What's that? Now, if you aren't going to listen to me, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'll try calling them up and see what they say. But it's it's not just in front of my house. It's everywhere. Yeah. That's really dark. So thank you for listening. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anybody else on this side of the room like to address the council? Anybody in the room like to address the council that I missed? We'll close the citizens open forum. A couple items of recap on the mayor's minute and a couple upcoming events. The recap, Oktoberfest, great job by the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce on their annual Top of the Bay Oktoberfest. Council and staff had fun during their shift working the bar on Saturday. We mean business, our monthly visit by Upper Tampa Bay Chamber. The assistant city manager and myself in October, we visited First Watch, that's all that's on here, and we visited Bryco, and we visited Goodwill. So both, all those were great experiences. So um, some good businesses. See you girls. Mm -hmm. uh, Halloween happenings, a record 550 people attended our annual Halloween happenings. Great seeing sponsors involved and feel the excitement of the children. Uh, and we had the judges costume contest, which was great. 
uh, upcoming event, annual talent show, Friday, November 9th, 7 to 9 p.m. at the Cypress Forest Rec Center, free admission. Good luck to those participating. Dan will be wearing a tutu at the talent show. Annual Veterans Day ceremony that is this coming Sunday, November 11th at 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. at Veterans Memorial Park. Join us for this important annual event as we honor our veterans and reveal the newly engraved names on the memorial wall. Keynote speaker is Michael Hill, director of Pinellas County Veterans Services Department. And finally, a holiday reminder, the city offices, libraries, and facilities will be closed Thursday, November 22nd, and Friday, November 23rd, in observance of Thanksgiving holidays. So that wraps up the Mayor's Minute. On to our agenda. Uh, a couple items in the CRA. First item is to adopt resolution 2018-21, amending the FY 2019 Community Redevelopment Agent Agency budget. Mr. Braithwaite. Mayor, uh, this is to appropriate funds for a land purchase that we would like to propose, which is the next item, and I'll read the resolution by title only, resolution 2018-21, resolution of the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, revising the budget for fiscal year beginning October 1, 2018, and ending September 30th, 2019, authorizing the City Manager and the Director of Administrative Services to revise the existing budget and providing for an effective date hereof. That's the reading of resolution 2018. There's 21 by title only. Thank you. Uh, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 5 nothing. Thank you. Next item, approved purchase of commercial property in the Community Redevelopment Agency area at 101 Fairfield Street, Oldsmar, Florida, from M&S Awards Incorporated. Yes, Mayor, we're asking Council for a motion to approve the contract purchase as amended in your packet for property located at 101 Fairfield Street, Oldsmar. Florida, Oldsmar revised map block 80, lots one through seven, less the road right away for State Road 584. From, as you said, MS Awards Incorporated for the sum of $900,000, paid by the Community Redevelopment Agency Fund. Staff recommends approval. I am looking, am I looking at something wrong? That's Exhibit one. Contract. This is the amendments in front of it. Is that what you're looking for? Well, I'm looking at the contract. Uh, I, let me look. We're looking for the price nine hundred thousand. This says eight hundred. That's the original. Right it's on the amendment. Okay. It says in the first it's section. Of the oh, amendment. missed it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Any uh, questions on this? Like a motion. I would. Move to approve. Second. 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 Motion and a second. All in favor of this? I, I gotta say one. Just, just one. Point. Oh yeah, discussion. The uh, this is what the TIF money's coming from. Mm -hmm. This is why we have a downtown redevelopment. Yep. We don't take this money from anything else but just the TIF money. And we got the money to pay for it. Yes, sir, we do. Yep. Awesome. It's the last piece of the puzzle. So It's the nose. The huh? nose. It's the nose on the face. So hopefully face. We'll, our face will be very pretty at some point. Uh, that's all that's in. Oh, all those. Any other discussion? I have none. Oh, I thought you did. Okay. okay. Anything else? All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Passes five nothing. Next is the consent docket. We have a couple of items. Approved minutes of the October 16th, 2018 City Council meeting. Waive the bid requirements and award uh, Appalachian Materials Services Incorporated AMS the sludge hauling and disposal service contract for the city's water reclamation facility WRF under the same terms and conditions as the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida bid number 150042 BRS PB 16-019. Next item is approved the professional services agreement and an award 2018 uh, award 2018-008 FRQ to Florida design consultants for continuing services for surveying and mapping and the final uh, item is approved the tentative agenda of the November 20th, 2018 meeting. If nobody wishes to pull anything, I need a motion. So move. Second. second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Aye. Passes 5 nothing. Thank you. Next is the City of Oldsmar. Um, approved reappointment of Kim P.T. Feld as a board member of the Leisure Services Advisory Board. Ta-da! Mm -hmm. Yay, Kim. Roll number two tonight. <laughs> Good evening. I live at 207 Fairfield Street in Oldsmar. 
Awesome, and we appreciate you doing it. You having fun? You're on one of the funner boards. That's I am. Cool. I'm on the Leisure Services Advisory Board. Get into fights at all at that one? Pardon me? Do you get into fights at that one? Or not? not anymore. Teen years. It's exciting board. That's an exciting, it is a very exciting board. It's a very. Is there when I was there? It's a very energetic. It is a very. We make. We really make some big headway over the years. We brought in the. Um, Zip lining, we, we made recommendations for that. We brought in the, um, we redeveloped the park at Arioles. We approved the beach access since I've been there. We built the new environmental center that our troop is hoping to be able to use for the, thank you, um, that we're hoping to use for the February event for Girl Scouts. Um, we've got kayaking now. We didn't have that 15 years ago. There's a lot of wonderful things that we've helped bring disc golf. That might be kind of something neat to bring to the volunteer dinner is kind of a list of accomplishments that, especially your board, some some of the others might not have that kind of input, but that might be kind of neat to, <laughs> well, I mean, there's some of them, you know. It's a board of adjustments crack, I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> so at any rate, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. It, yeah, so. Uh, thank you for yeah, serving. Yeah, thank you. We, we couldn't, as you know, I say this all the time, we couldn't do this kind of stuff without our volunteers. It's very important. That, well, it's that a wonderful have. way for me to give back to our community because I'm a certified therapeutic recreation specialist, so it's kind of part of my it's part of my niche. Kind of therapeutic. And I think, I don't remember the exact number, but I think we almost have as many volunteers as we do employees, don't we? Roughly close to it, I know. So, yeah, so at any rate, we I'll think, make a motion. Yeah, motion. So, second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five nothing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming in both. Next, Gator, interview our Poet Laureate candidate for tonight. This is from our former Poet Laureate. I'm Steve Gator Black. I live at 2155 Montclair Road in the city down the road over there, uh, Clearwater. I, I say that reluctantly. Uh, I'd like to introduce the person that I would recommend as the Poet Laureate. Uh, this young lady is uh, uh, an accomplished author. She's a, a poet. She's been published. And at this time, let me introduce Amanda. She's behind you. Butler. <laughs> she also has another name, but I don't remember what her other name is. Poet Laureate. <laughs> Thank you, Gator. Welcome. Hello, my name is Amanda Beal, and I live at 135 East Lake Club Drive in Oldsmar. And my married name is Amanda Beal. I write under my maiden name, Amanda N. Butler. And I've been writing poetry since I was 14 years old in 2005, and I never stopped. Uh, like Gator said, I have been published. Um, two, I have two chapbooks out with Dancing Girl Press. Uh, one is called Tableau Vivant, and it's about theater and flowers. And um, I have a second chapbook out called Effervescent kind of a play on words between effervescent and crescent is in like the moon. So. Uh, yeah, ask away. <laughs> you don't have a sample tonight, do you? I actually did bring a little something. Okay. Um, <laughs> so when uh, my husband and I first moved to Oldsmar in January, I absolutely fell in love with um, the environment that I could see right outside my window. And I wrote a poem called Good Morning Oldsmar, and I was hoping I could read it tonight. That would be great. Thank you. Good Morning Oldsmar. Good morning, Oldsmar, and your sunrise that peeks through palm fronds. And good morning also to the retention ponds and its sandhill crane reflections across your bald eagles nesting atop the telephone pole outside my apartment. Your morning breath smells of cut grass, smells of slight rain, smells of new coffee. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, I need a motion to uh, accept her as the poet laureate for the Hello. city of Oldsmar. Oh, do I have a second? Second. Second. <laughs> you guys can fight it out. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Welcome. Awesome. Thank Welcome. you. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. Gator's a great guy, and, and if he, he recommends you, I know we're in good shape. So. You, will, you won't ask us to write a poem, will you? Oh, I plan to. <laughs> Thank you. I'm honored. <laughs> Probably should have asked that question before we voted, huh? You'll be lucky if the mayor will write it. I wrote mine last time. <laughs> Didn't I? I did. I wrote it. She also keeps oh, track yeah, of it. Oh, yeah, I did. Pardon me? She also keeps track of them better than I <laughs> I hope so. That's not hard to do. 
He lost mine. Well, welcome. Uh, that's all under City of Oldsmar. Next is our City Attorney. I've got a couple of items tonight. The first item, item number nine on your agenda, is the second and final reading of Ordinance 2018-08. I'll read that by title only. Ordinance 2018-08, an ordinance of the City of Oldsmar, amending the goals, objectives, and policies of the future land use element of the City of Oldsmar Comprehensive Plan to comply with Chapters Chapter 2012-245, uh, Laws of Florida as amended, requiring all local government comprehensive plans and land development regulations in Pinellas County to be consistent with the countywide plan, including the countywide plan map and the countywide rules, providing for an e effective date. That was a reading of Ordinance 2018-08 by title only. I need a motion. Public hearing. Oh, well, yeah, public hearing. This is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to address this item? Seeing no one will close the public hearing. I need a motion for discussion. Second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? No. Nope. Mayor. No. Nope. Call the roll. Vice Mayor Seidel? Yes. Councilmember Sarecki? Yes. Councilmember McKee? Yes. Councilmember Beavis? Yes. Mayor Beavis? Aye. Ordinance 2018-08, amending the future land use element of the City of Oldsmore Comprehensive Plan is adopted with five votes for and zero against. So the second public hearing um, is on Ordinance 2018-14. I'll read that by title only as well. Ordinance 2018-14, an ordinance of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, amending certain sections of both the Land Development Code and Town Center Development Code to permit, mic to permit uh, microbreweries and brew pubs to provide definitions for microbreweries and brew pubs, to provide development standards for microbreweries and brew pubs, to include regulating outdoor storage and disposal of byproducts and waste off-site, screening of loading areas and mechanical equipment, and exempting microbreweries and brew pubs in all districts from the district uh, distance requirement from church, school, and residential uses, and providing for an effective date. That was the second final reading of Ordinance 2000 2018-14 by title only, and it does require public hearing. This is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to address this item? Exciting news from the city of Wilsmore, I think. So uh, for discussion, need a motion? So moved. Second. Sorry. Motion and a second. Discussion on this item from council? Yep. I think it's great. Um, we already have one kind of doing some renovations, as I recall, right, to to a building over there. Off we have more than one. More than one? So, so. That's great. So uh, if there's no other discussion, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Seidel? Yes. Councilmember Siraki? Yes. Councilmember McKee? Yes. Councilmember Beaverland? Yes. Mayor Beavis? Aye. Ordinance 2018-14, amending land development code and town center code to permit microbreweries and microbubs and develop standards is adopted with five votes for and zero against. Next item on the agenda is to approve the Bayside Terrace partial replat. You remember that back in January, you approved the Bayside Terrace plat. Since then, there was a need to revise the plat. The applicant has requested um, the replat. Um, in your um, staffing that you've got from, from Marie, it provides that the reason it is being done is, is that um, the owner changed the sequence of the inner six units on two buildings uh, to ch change the, the footage instead of 24, 24, 18, 18, 18, 18, and 24 and 24 to 18, 18, 24, 24, 18, 18. So they're basically changing the interior, the interior lots. Um, so um, I'm sure that if you have any specific questions of the replat that Marie would be able to answer those questions for you. Otherwise, I wanted you to know that it went before the planning board on October 10th. The planning board approved the uh, Bayside Terrace partial replat on a 7-0 vote, and um, it's for your consideration and approval tonight. Thank you, Marie. Do you wish to add anything? No, the city attorney pretty much covered it. It's just shifting the lot lines. It's not actually adding any lots. It's just shifting. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other any questions of staff by chance? No. No. If not, I need a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes five nothing. Okay. And the last item under city attorney is a for you to consider revising a previously approved site plan, uh, reducing the number of parking spaces from 90 to 84 spaces and the architectural approval for the property located at. Let me just pull up the address.
Okay, th this is the property that um, they came before the city council on January 2018 for the major amendment to approve the site plan. This is the, the GC GSA building, um, and it's close to Tampa Road and Gimgong Road uh, next to the O'Reilly Auto Parts store. Um, as part of the approval that took place in January 2018, the city council uh, approved it subject to the condition that the applicant would work with staff and revise the architectural design of the shopping center and the, and the apartment to be more consistent with the Tampa Road corridor plan and the adjacent properties. Um, and that is what is before you tonight, and I'm sure Marie will have uh, some more details for you. Let's open it. Do you have anything, or would you like to? Just a PowerPoint. Oh, sorry. My bad. This will be a really short uh, PowerPoint. I just wanted to show you some rendering so you can get an idea of what the applicant proposes to do. Okay. Um, whoops, excuse me. So the proof site plan, there was an apartment in the rear, a medical building in the interior, and then he was constructing a new retail center on Tampa Road. So it's the old GSA building. Mm -hmm. um, subsequent to approval by the city council, um, they you approve like a Mediterranean type of look. And he's come back and he would like to have a more modern medical look to the the interior building and then construct something that's consistent with the medical building in the front. So we're really talking about the medical building tonight. Um, there's also a reduction in parking spaces. It is not a variance. Um, there's 83 parking spaces required. Even with the uh, elimination of six parking spaces, there'll still be 84, so it'll be one above. So, um, so this is the elevation that the council approved. You can see it's two-story um, with a tower, um, et cetera, earth tone colors. Whoops, excuse me. So this is the elevation that he's proposing for the medical building. You can see that it appears two-story again. The tower has been eliminated, um, and it'll be earth tone colors. And I think that you can see a little bit um, clearer on this rendering. There's going to be like a drive up. That's why he needed to eliminate the six parking spaces. So it's a very clean uh, look. It's going to be um, muted um, earth tone colors, and I think it'll look good as far as the Tampero corridor. But as I said, this is still the interior building. It's not the one that's going to be fronting. So we asked the applicant to give us a rendering of what the retail buildings are going to look like in the front to make sure. So this was the previous retail center and this is what he's proposing. But this is still very preliminary. We're, he's still going to provide additional um, architectural elements or to make it a little bit more um, stand out on Tampa Road, including landscaping, et cetera. So staff is recommending that uh, approval of the revised architecture and the elimination of the six parking spaces. But you know, I just wanted to clarify, it's not a, a variance. I have a question. Make it very plain that we all understand mm -hmm. that the second rendering shouldn't even be here yet because now we're all going to look at it and, and then. Well, I wanted to show the council that he that he was going to be consistent with the middle building. You know, it'll still come back to you. That. I understand that, but it also has to be consistent to what the uh, the corridor is in it, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about this one later. Mm -hmm. To make it real clean because I don't like that. Well, would this come back before us though? This second. Element? It can come back. As I said, we're still working on the retail buildings in the front because that is really what you know people are going to see driving down Tampa Road, see, that's and we want it to be more. So will it come back before us? Yes, it will. It can. Yes, sure. it will. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I... you know, she she said that it it can come back. No. It will, as far as I'm concerned, it will come back. Right. Okay. That's that's fine. I think that Question. you know you need to see how it's all going to mesh with the middle building that's and okay, the whole but, complex. But it will come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, to me, it's not drastically different, other than the the, the height. You know, the old one had a staggering. Yeah. Yeah, it had some variation, and it, and it appears that in the previous one, it was five buildings and a walkway, and then one building. <laughs> It still appears like that, but it looks like they are putting a, a facade across the front of the opening. Is that what that is? Yeah, kind of like a, a canopy type of thing, but he, it's still very preliminary. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. you know, we just needed to see that 
it was going to be totally different than the middle building, but he's anxious to do the redevelopment of the middle, middle but building. But what we should be time. talking about tonight is the back building and not this front building. I uh, just was hesitant to show you the middle building without having something to show you in the front that, because I didn't fine. want fine. there to be a... Fair enough, yeah. Fair well, enough. You want to look at it all in its entirety, but I, to be honest with you, I kind of like the medical building the way, you know, the newer one better than the older one. I think it's got a three... How, how far is that, the depth of that protrusion or whatever you want to call that? The canopy? I don't know. When you, that one view that you had, kind of a, a sketchy drawing, kind of was a side view. Uh, was it that? That Maybe, one. No, the, 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 the new one. Yeah, that one. Yes, the one on the right. That. Oh, is that okay. Overhang? The one that's. Yeah, it's kind of like a porta cache. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a. Building. Yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, it's not truly a porta cache, but it, it. It's three dimensional. Is that? How, yes. How deep is that? Roughly, do we know? I'd have to ask the um, architect. Okay. Four feet. Four feet. Four feet. Oh, four feet. There we go. Okay. Um. This is a little bit different than the Mediterranean Revival that we've had along Tampa Road. And not that I dislike it, but I think that we've had a lot of Mediterranean Revival type of architecture on Tampa Road. So this is kind of yes. making it a little different. Well, well, you're the people that made the, uh, mm -hmm. okay. The only reason, I, well, I, I don't know if I agree with the mayor or not. Maybe I do with this new design. I, I don't know. Uh, but I think with this this new design, with possibly what's going to come in front of it, can be offset. Mm -hmm. But you, we have okayed one building already. That looks like this on 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 the corridor, and that's the gas station. Gas. So who do what? Mm -hmm. Oh, Thornton's? Thornton's because of that thing. Oh, it's up. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, kind of. I don't know if that would... Yeah. I don't there know will be I, another building that's going to be presented to the council that's going to complement this glass and I, I modern mean, building mm -hmm. at a future date. I just have a quick question. Uh, is there any change in height? So what's the height of this building versus the height of the I believe this one's 28 feet high. And then do you happen to know what the preliminary front, the height of the front building might be? That is a little lower, so this would, you know, kind of rise above it. But we can okay. work with, you know, the applicant. I was just to... curious if there was a significant difference. Do you there, need a there's motion? There's going to be quite a bit. Uh, and I just, uh, just one comment, and it's to your, 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 the Tampa Road corridor. I was actually literally just talking with somebody about this the other day about Tampa Road corridor and how you can almost oversaturate one particular style of architecture. Sure. And so... Um, then, they some all, then they all start, like me and Al's neighborhood, they all start to look alike after a while. So We're uh, looking for a variation. Like uniqueness, I think, is really paramount. And for a medical paramount. building, I mean, for a medical building, I mm -hmm. think that's great. And it does meet the Tampa Road corridor design. Yes. And are these the colors, I assume? that They're look? muted colors. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, hello, sir. Yeah. I didn't see you there. Yeah, good evening, sir. How are you? Like, uh, as uh, Mayor said, uh, allow me to build the back building, the medical one, right? I really designed it. I think, in my personal opinion, it looks much better than the one which we previously designed. Front wheel building, uh, sir, I 100% agree with you. We sh will come back. You put it out of the condition. We will come back for the front building because I was requested by uh, the sure. city that there should be some, we have to show some drawing. So allow me to build the center one so I can start my medical center. Sure. My problem is my lease is up where I am. My current landlord asked me to pay double rent. If I have to stay, if I'm paying mortgage over here, double rent over there since the last few months. So I need help. Yeah. I'm building a good building for the front one. Absolutely, whatever city council says, staff says, right, I'm going to build. This is my also goal is, I haven't finalized the complete project of the first first build, the front building, which is, will be on the Tampa Road. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready to work with you and absolutely I agree with you. We will come back get approvals, that is the building which people are going to see. Yep. And even in this design, we're putting water fountains out, right, nice nice water fountains. Okay. And like Mayor said, it's a better design for a medical center. I think so. Okay, I, I would also suggest that we don't get in a, another discussion as we have in the past, even with the carpet down here, with colors. You know, I don't have, if, if he wants these colors. Well, it's got to meet, I mean, it's that's just be earth that's staff. Colors. Yeah. That, that's staff's thing. Those colors are okay. Yeah, well, I'm we sure. have gotten into long discussions about 
colors. colors. I know okay. we have. I don't think that's right. I still have the Agreed. paint. I still Agreed. have the paint chip from Thornton sitting on my dresser to, to remind me of it. So. Mr. Mayor, would you like a I would motion? love a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the re uh, revision as presented. I will second that motion. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Yes. Passes five nothing, I believe. Anything else? That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Next is our, and by, just so you know, I'm a little discombobulated because my computer's not working, so I'm going off of a paper copy to bounce back and forth. Old school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> discombobulated. <laughs> always broke? I don't know. Huh? No. <laughs> my agenda post isn't working. Uh, next is city manager. At least Thank you, Mayor. Item 13 is adopt resolution 2018-19, approving Pinellas County Project B. 8080654075 as a qualified applicant pursuant to section 288-106 sorry 288.106 Florida statutes and identify sources of local financial support from Pinellas County Project B8080654075 as local participation in the qualified target industry tax refund program the QTI program as it's referred to is a tool available to Florida communities to encourage quality job growth in targeted high value added businesses. If approved by the state of Florida, which this one was, Pinellas County and the city of Oldsmar, Pinellas County approved it last week, the applicant may receive refunds on some of the taxes that it pays. This program is funded by the state of Florida for 80% and local governmental jurisdictions, the county and us split 20%. The same Florida statute provides confidentiality for the applicant of an incentive if requested, this particular applicant has requested confidentiality, and the project will always be known as, as what I said before, B8080654075. The economic impact of the project's capital investment is estimated at $12.2 million. An estimated 33 employees are projected to be hired, and the total financial support requested is $33,000, of which $16,500 will be paid if approved by the city of Oldsmar. Staff recommends approval and I will read the resolution by title only. Resolution 2018-19, a resolution by the city of Oldsmar, Florida, approving Pinellas County Development Project B 8080654075 as a qualified applicant for the Qualified Target Industry Tax Refund Program, pursuant to section 288.106 Florida statutes, identifying local county financial support for project B 8080654075 and providing for an effective date. Mayor, that's the reading resolution 2018-19. This is a resolution. I need a motion for discussion. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Interestingly enough, I, this isn't because I don't have a life, but I actually happen to be watching the Pinellas County uh, Commission meeting the day that this happened because I was watching Mark Woodard, the county administrator's last day and seeing all the accolades he got and then they rolled right into this Oldsmar thing. So I was like, Oh, interesting. So uh, I, I think this could be some uh, great stuff for us in, in this particular scenario, but I think it might lend itself, even with the next item, to uh, uh, some potential benefit to the property next door or even by the library, you know, mm -hmm. for, us to, for us to do. So I have a motion and a second. If it, Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor? Yes. Aye. Passes five, nothing. nothing. Thank you, Mayor. Item 14 is adopt resolution 2018-20, declaring the city of Oldsmar's intent to place on the March 12, 2019 ballot for presentation to the electorate a referendum question of whether the city of Oldsmar City Council shall be authorized to grant, pursuant to Section 3, Article 7 of the state constitution, what's known as an ad valorem tax exemption to new businesses and expansions of existing businesses that are expected to create new full-time jobs in the city, providing a ballot title, excuse me, in summary, the proposed referendum, providing for notice of the referendum elections, providing notice to the Department of State, providing for an effective date. The program provides a tax incentive, not unlike the first one that's just passed, to encourage new businesses to relocate to Oldsmar and for existing businesses to expand and purchase new equipment. The, purchase, the purpose is to attract higher wage jobs within qualified target industries, promote sustainable economic development, and encourage additional investment in the city. Currently, the program is presently offered by Pinellas County, Hillsborough County, and the cities of Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Largo, Pinellas Park, and Tampa. And I'll read the resolution by title only. 
resolution number 2018-20, a resolution of the city of Oldsmar, Florida, declaring its intent to place on the March 12, 2019 ballot for presentation to the electorate, a referendum question of whether the city of Oldsmar City Council shall be authorized to grant pursuant to section three, article seven of the state constitution, ad valorem tax exemptions to new businesses and expansions of existing businesses that are expected to create new full-time jobs in the city providing a ballot title for the summary of the proposed referendum, providing for notice of the referendum election, providing for notice to the Department of State, and providing for an effective date. Mayor, that concludes the reading of Resolution 2018-20. I did have one additional thing I'd like to call attention, uh, Council's attention to on Section 3. Um, we believe uh, in a grammatical sense it would work, but we want to make sure the question on Section 3 is exactly as it would be posed on the referendum. And in the first sentence it reads, shall the city council of the city of Oldsmar City be authorized to grant, et cetera. Uh, we think that second reference to city should say the word Florida. So it reads, shall the city council of the city of Oldsmar, Florida be authorized to grant pursuant to section three and so forth. Wanted to make that correction now so that uh, mm -hmm. we can make sure the question is appropriately listed when the referendum uh, hits is assuming it, it gets approved tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you want it to be as clear as, as can with these things, so. I'll make a motion. Uh, motion to uh, approve with the change. Is that your motion? Uh, second for that. Um, any discussion? I just have just one question. It's interesting that there are uh, only four cities, Clearwater, St. Pete, Largo, and Pinellas Park of the 24 cities in Pinellas County. I assume this, I assume Pinellas County is also in a participant in this? Correct. Okay. Do, do we the, know? Do that's, we know? About the, that's about the only cities that would end up do participate in this because the rest of them are on the beach. Well, I mean, they're, yeah, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, Dunedin isn't in it. You know, Safety Harbor is not in it. So I'm just curious if we know if any of these have actually participated in it other than being it, in it. It's pretty new. I'm not sure if anybody's actually completed a funding yet. Uh, Pinellas County is the driver. Obviously, that's how we found out about it. Um, we were aware. The QTI program has been around right. since 03. Right. This is a newer tool, so uh, very few cities had taken advantage of it. So when the county took the lead, the county made sure the uh, cities where there were applicants that had already made an application, like we have, uh, made sure they knew about it and encouraged us to consider it. So um, it's kind of new to most of us. The city list that I read were the only cities that have actually put it in place or had the referendum. And, yeah. Did any other cities put in for a referendum or do a referendum and it not pass? Did I am know? not aware of any. Okay. Do we know? Either of you guys know? I, I'm not aware of any. This is. I'm just. It's a great. It sounds like a us. great program. It sounds be, like a win-win. Yeah, it sounds like a great program, and be neat to see moving down the road if it. Yeah, I think it has some opportunity for us. I mean, the big part of this is let's assume that the citizens agree yeah. and they want to have this in the city's toolbox. The bigger question then becomes, what does that program look like? What I like about it is we have the ability to design our own program right. where you know we don't have to go 10 years, maybe we go a shorter period of time. We don't, maybe it's tiered. I mean, there's a lot of different things that we can do with this that would have to be approved by this council. And, and if I understand it right, it's applicant by applicant. Correct. I mean, so you could, depending on what it is and, and how they fit within this program, it might look different for... for All this would be doing would be agreeing to have the referendum. Right. There are sure. three additional steps if the referendum passes to get to the enabling ordinance where we would design it, to get to somebody to apply for it, to then the exemption ordinance where you'd specify exactly what you'd be giving. Yeah, and I mean, from our perspective, this is us offering an opportunity for economic development in the community, and then it's up to the residents to determine if it's a viable alternative, and you know, that, then it, it falls on them. So we have a motion and a second with the addition of Florida uh, to the verbiage. Any other discussion? I have. Yep. We had a long discussion on this one. The uh, two things, number one, if this does pass, and if I, <laughs> depend on whether I win the election or not, it gives the city manager something to work with, oh, sure. which is going to affect other councils down the road. So I wanted to make sure that uh, the other councils down the road, we weren't putting a harness and a bit in their mouth somehow. 
The only, the only other thing that, the, that bothers me is that when I was elected in 1990, my fourth, my fourth meeting here, I had people that wanted to hang me and everybody else on council. There must have been 800 people out here in the streets screaming at us because not you, but the guy who was with you didn't educate anybody. Nobody was educated about a referendum type thing, and they were here ready to kill us. And that's when I, they, everybody thought I killed the downtown redevelopment. I actually saved it in, 90, in 1990. What bothers me is that we do all this, and all of a sudden we come to do it, and you got a bunch of people out here screaming, what, what, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? Have to educate the people somehow. We got to educate the people somehow. I'll say it. We've got to educate the people somehow so when the referendum comes, we don't have a bunch of people here screaming at us. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I think it's all about communication. On, okay. On okay. How are we going to communicate it? The feedback I gave to Al was. Before absentee ballots go out, we should be communicating with the residents what this means, what they're voting on. If they vote yes, what does that mean? If they vote no, what does that mean? But don't put it in terms that nobody understands. No, the, but, but we can control the communication. I mean, it can come from our communications. Clerk, and we also should meeting. have at least one one meeting on it with the residents. Oh, that, absolutely. That Workshops. Yeah. No, I, other than that, I'm fine. And, and I guess, and I don't know, this is, I'm just off the cuff of the t you two, uh, their ideas. I mean, do we maybe look at these four cities and talk to them and see what they might have done from an education standpoint to their public so we're not reinventing the wheel? Because they got it passed, you know, what the timeline was, how far out the lead time, the things that they did, because it, clearly it worked for them. So instead of us reinventing the wheel, mm -hmm. it might, might not hurt to talk to them and we'll do. See, see what they what they okay. use. So. Yeah. Uh, we have a motion and a second, right? Motion and a second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Passes five or nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Item 15 is discuss the petition for a four-way stop sign at Washington Avenue and Buckingham Avenue and or Dartmouth Avenue. A petition from residents on Washington Avenue was received on September 4th, 2018, recommending stop signs to be placed on Washington Avenue between State Street and St. Petersburg Drive. The key points in this petition were that speeding and anticipated increases in traffic volumes were occurring. In response, the Technical Review Committee convened on October 11th, 2018, the notes of which are in your packet. October 11th, 2018, Technical Review Committee recommended the request for stop signs be denied on the basis that the stop signs are not an effective form of traffic calming. The TRC recommended that a speed study be conducted to determine if traffic calming measures were warranted. If traffic calming is warranted, then speed tables are the most cost-effective devices that would not require modifications to existing drainage structures. You see in part of the support documentation, the sheriff did kind of a, I guess we'd call it a, um, a light traffic study by observing how many tickets and what it looked like over there. So um, that's all in your packet. Um, this is a point for council discussion, so I have no recommendation. I'm just reading the chart real quick. Uh, for discussion purposes, a motion. Second. Second. Any the, thoughts? Is the motion we have to a motion. approve or to yeah, approve? What is the motion? To approve as, it, as it's written right now, but that doesn't mean that'll happen. The studies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do this, the whole routine all over here, Dan, because you came back and saved it. This is the only time we actually represent the people at a certain spot in the city of Osmore. Everything we do usually affects everybody in the town. But in certain times, such as this, we're actually representing a group of people that actually ask us to do something. In studies, if you put a patrolman out there constantly, you're gonna get a bunch of tickets on Washington. And these people want to, I'm going to tell you, they do speed on Washington. I, they do, they do, they do. And I wouldn't put two stop signs there, but I, but I do suggest that one stop, stop sign go on that thing. I'm going to tell you a little story, if you don't mind, Mayor. When I was elected in 1990, there was no stop signs in this city. There was no stop signs on Bayview. There was no stop signs anywhere. 
So I made a list where stop signs, there was no stop signs on Park. There was no start, stop signs on Devonshire. There was, well, Devonshire doesn't need a stop sign. There were no stop signs on, on, on any of the streets. So I made a list and put it in a motion to put stop signs out there because people was sure drive. I may not be proud of this, but I chased some people down shore drive, went by my house yeah. about 60 miles an hour. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Well, you know, it happens all over the place. I mean, and if you, put the sheriff, if you put the sheriff at any given location at any given day, they're going to catch somebody. I can't tell you how many times I'm walking out of this building, and they are flying down State Street. Oh, I okay. mean, they are flying so down there. So the people were, uh, the majority of the people. And it's not me. I'm just saying. It's not me. But he needs to be watched. <laughs> no, uh, there's and, a story and, about and that. The, the only stop sign that everybody wanted to hang me with it was a stop sign on East Shore Drive in Dunkirk. <laughs> And so they wouldn't hang me. I said, okay. But, right. but I had a stop sign at okay. Shore, Shore Drive in, in Pine Avenue. Because All right. Well, let's get back to this one that's on the agenda tonight. And um, I mean, I, I agree that people do speed down that road, and people like the, you know, the sheriff clocked them 10 miles over. That's pretty fast for a neighborhood residential. street. And there's kids, I've seen them out by the road almost every day almost to the street playing and yeah. you know just in their front yard yeah, and I, it's dangerous so i personally think that something needs to be there whether it's the motions of the stop sign or a speed hump something um because clearly they have enough time uh to speed up before they get to the stop sign at buckingham so what were you going to say here yep yeah, uh, mr mayor i i'm of the opinion mm -hmm. that if a group of citizens who live right there come to us and they've got petitions for people who live up and down the street and say, we all want this. We approve it. That's always, I recognize that there are certain protocols that get applied, and I respect that. But by the same token, um, to Jerry's point, it's one of the few times that very specific street, very specific neighborhood, somebody can ask us to do something. Everyone's in agreement on that street, or certainly the majority, uh, that we can do it. I don't, I don't really believe in, mm -hmm. you know, us going, well, we shouldn't do it because blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's to me, there's no good reason not to. Yeah. Do I speak in favor of it? Okay. Mayor, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. When Jim Reinecker was the mayor, I remember he put speed bumps in my neighborhood at Split Fork Drive. I was so pissed off. I hate <laughs> speed bumps. But I have to tell you, they really do work. And then a couple months, well, a year ago, we put the speed bumps over at Pepper Tree. Yeah. I was against that also because I hate speed bumps. But I've actually... You came to your senses. Yeah, I've actually seen, from living there, going down there all the time, an improvement in people the way they drive. So I'm convinced that if people want speed bumps, give them to them. Okay. And... and I guess I have a question about the TR, or TRC's recommendation and the fact that they don't feel that it's an effective form of traffic calming, and they suggested the tra speed study be conducted um, because speed bumps are a more effective device. And it also says something about wouldn't require modifying existing drainage structures. Would the stop signs require drainage structures to be modified, moved, relocated, or anything? Um, oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Daniel Simpson, city engineer. Um, to be clear, the Florida Green Book is saying that unwarranted stop signs are ineffective. That's the point that was being made. If you want stop signs, you can give stop signs. Yeah. Right? But that's the point was if you want to do traffic calming, speed humps or speed tables are more effective. But in terms of drainage, no, stop signs will not. No, they won't do that. That won't be a drainage I, problem, but there's multiple um, different, like, traffic calming devices. Yeah. And the, the other ones would cause drainage problems. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that yes. it's not because of the stop signs. And if the traffic study comes back and says that traffic tables are not required, we could still then put in stop signs if that was wish of the – or we can put them in tonight. I don't – you you have the authority to sure, do, what to do whichever we want. But <laughs> yes. I tend to, as much as I hate speed tables, we have them in our neighborhood. I think they're the biggest waste of time because where they're located, nobody really lives in front of them, so they run over them. 
and they floor it. Not me again, but they floor it once they get past it. <laughs> but I think in a but I, I didn't say Al, no. But in a neighborhood, a residential neighborhood like down there, I mean, speed tables might be the more effective way to yeah. to slow people down. That's just my opinion. I don't. I, I, I'm for whatever the people want, but they don't. Maybe this is a. Maybe that is a better resolution for them. Well, they asked for a stop sign. They didn't ask for speed bumps. Right. Well, was speed bumps offered to them as a better call me? No. Oh. I, I I would suggest speed humps, but my only concern is consistency. So like there's the stop sign at yeah. State Street, then the stop sign at Buckingham. Kind of makes sense. Then you just have the stop sign at yeah. Dartmouth as well um, versus like stop sign speed humps. So, you know, um, so maybe we just do the stop sign for a consistency on Washington because that would be the only speed hump on the entire street all but the way down like the shore. Like the mayor said, the technical review board says they want they don't want they don't think stop signs would be effective and it's stating here that they want a traffic calming a study t it's study not, done it's not effective if people don't stop at the stop sign okay so here's an, here's the kind of the reverse of what i just mentioned which is maybe they do the study and they do this maybe tonight we approve the stop signs and if we find that it's not working we take the stop signs out and yeah and go another yeah, i'm okay that's, with that's that fine. this is yep but put them in what no. Ready to go. I know you are. <laughs> well, if you wouldn't have told a nine-minute story, we would have been done. <laughs> motion is to put stop signs motion in. Motion is to put stop signs in. Correct. We have a motion and a second for discussion purposes. Yeah. The question is, all those in favor of the motion to put stop signs? Oh, sorry. I think you need to specify whether we're doing it just at Washington and Buckingham or Washington and Dartmouth as well. That was the request. I guess I, I, tend, I might kind of default to the residents well, we that lived in there. There so. is a, is, oh, is there no stop sign there? They right? just asked for either one of them. Yeah. So which one are we doing? Did I not say that correctly? I'm thinking of Park and Buckingham, the stop sign there. But is there, there's no stop I, sign see, in I, Washington I, and Buckingham. I drive that all the time, but I don't really. I just, th I've always considered a stop sign because that's where I stop and turn onto my street. So, we're, the, so the request is for a stop sign at Washington, period. But and Buckingham and or Dartmouth. Yes. Well, I can tell you the, the homeowner Washington. lives closer to Dartmouth, but um, certainly. So they want Washington, and then they also, they and then they want Buckingham or Dartmouth? Is that the way I'm reading this? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I apologize for maybe not writing that the most concise way, but it's Washington and Dartmouth. Like, there's it's intersections. Right. Yes. On basically stopping traffic on Washington at one of the two intersections okay. between St. Pete Drive and State either Street. Or. Either or. Either so, or. Yeah, you know, both. Washington or, and you know, okay. My suggestion or Washington and Buckingham. would be Dartmouth because then they're going to hit the other stop sign right there at St. Pete Drive. I so, drive that thing, that thing almost every day so, wandering through the city. Buckingham? I'm saying Washington and Dartmouth. Dartmouth. You live because down that will that slow way, them down. Does that clarify your motion? I, what I heard was Washington and Dartmouth. You made the motion, correct? You want to modify your motion? Oh, I didn't make the motion. I seconded who, it. Who made the motion? motion? And I wanted to clarify my motion. Make, yeah, we need for Washington and Dartmouth. Yep. Okay. And who seconded it? I seconded it. You agree with that? Yep. Modification? I agree. So the motion is for Washington and Dartmouth. All those in favor? Yes. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Passes 5 nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Item 16 is a request council approval to the to approve a co-sponsored special event application fee waiver request for the 37th annual Rotary Club of Oldsmar East Lake Armadillo Run. December 2018, the Rotary Club of Oldsmar East Lake will host its 37th annual Armadillo Run in Oldsmar. The club has been a valued civic organization over the years by providing support to the local community through events at schools, food and gifts for the needy and homeless, local emergency management agencies, disaster relief and local youth programs. Profits from this race will be utilized by the club to provide services and activities such as the Adopt a Class and Comeback Kid program at local schools, the Seminar for Tomorrow's Leaders program, Rotary Camp Florida, Holiday Adopt a Family program and support for wounded warriors, as well as others. The item request a waiver of fees in the amount of $3,940, and staff recommends approval. In a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Did you say it? I was flipping through this. What's the fee waiver? 
amount? $3,940. And we have approved this how many times? 36, maybe? Have, have we? I, I don't know if it's been here the whole once. time. But, <laughs> yeah. More than once. Mr. Mulvihill is the applicant. He represents the Rotary. Think, and right, and I don't know that we'd former. We've been waiver. doing this since 95. I know we've had the run, but I don't know if we've been doing waivers. We've been doing that since 95. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I know we've done it a long time. I can't okay, say no it's problem. 36. I, just, I was being an idiot. Sorry. All right, need a motion. You already have Oh, I've got a motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 5 nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Adams. Seven, 17. Recommend council approval for a revised cooperation and license agreement between the City of Oldsmar and the Lightning Foundation Incorporated, formalizing the details behind the planned construction of an outdoor roller street hockey facility to be located at the Oldsmar Sports Complex. This agreement replaces the terms of the original in its entirety. It makes reference to the party's intention of utilizing the Lightning Foundation's experienced facility vendor to complete all elements of the project and describes the role that each party is to play in both the construction and the ongoing use of the facility. Lastly, it specifies the dollar amount of the foundation contribution to the project. Once an acceptable proposal has been agreed to between the contractor and city staff, the dollar amount of the city contribution and contract will be brought back to council for final approval. Staff recommends approval. Does Al recommend approval? Yes. <laughs> Enthusiastic. I'll call yes. Mr. Feaster anytime you want. All fine. Throw name thrower you. I'll make a motion. Maybe. Motion? Second. Second. Tom, do you have anything to add to this? I know you were involved in this, so. No, I um, made it happen. Yep, good. And thank you for all the work and, and getting this done. So we have a motion and a second. I got, I got to be honest, probably one of the coolest documents in my six years as mayor that I'll, I'll get to sign for the city is, is probably this one from a, <laughs> from a visual standpoint, you know. She's excited. Oh. <laughs> Girl Scouts did it last summer at um, one of the... Camps and she's like super excited. Ours is going to be super cool too. So uh, it's going to be covered with a canopy and everything. So we'll be able to use it a lot. Council but face off. A council face off, yeah. But uh, it is yeah, kind I of, like we, we, I sign a lot of things, but visually, this is probably one of the cooler things that, that we have. Motion in a second. All those in favor? Yes. Uh, aye. Opposed? Oh, sorry. Did you have something to add? No. Okay. We can raise your hand. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Passes. Thank, Thank you, sir. Else? City clerk? I think Al has something else. I'm going to do him on our city council. Oh, oh, we're going to do that after you. Oh, okay. You. In that case, um, I'm quite interested in the next item. I don't have anything. Thank you. <laughs> I need a motion to forego 18 and 19 and move them till, <laughs> move them till 2019. <laughs> motion to tape them up. Um, consider item 18, consider the city clerk's annual compensation. Do we have a recap of, I think... How, how is this it's scoring or whatever it is? How does that? No, we satisfactory valuations are three. exceeds expectations, right. meets expectations, or below expectations. Not that that would ever happen. And it's got to be three of the and five. If, th if the majority of the council graded each of us uh, to meet expectations or exceeds them, then she's entitled to receive the same merit that the employees get. And I okay. All right, I'm fine with that. 4%. We took care of this a long time ago yep, because it got real hairy whenever this came up. Well, because I can't, couldn't get into my notes, I don't know. I assume they re you received at least three. Yeah. Every, you did, I guess. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve. Removed. Second. Second. And, and I got, do I have to clarify the percentage or no? Uh, motion They're going to get the same merit. Suggested. That's yours? just suggested, correct? Not yeah, but the resolution, resolution requires them specifically to specifically that. get whatever the employees okay, get. Okay, so we were talking about that earlier today. Is Was it, it 4%? Get, yeah. 4%. Whatever. 4%. The, motion to approve. 4%. Uh, second. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Passes. Yeah. Five no, you, you vote? Yes. You're so yeah. quiet down there. Yes. Okay. I'm nothing. Thank oh, you. Oh, 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 when does the city attorney, when do we get to you again? Oh, we reviewed him. This is a different kind of contract, so. Yeah, I know, but we. I'd be happy to provide uh, all the responses that I received. And by the way, thank you to everyone. No, 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 you have to them. do that. But, you know, we left you out for about 20 years I know, with, yeah, without I was, racing. I was going to make that point that you did not get an increase for how long? I don't know. Roughly 10 I'm, years? I'm happy with okay. where we're at. Right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, an, that's an unusual comment from a lawyer. I'm just going to point that out. <laughs> and I, and I, I want to make it clear that we added you to the thing because I think it's important that 
that it be documented. Sure. Even though we know it's going to be good, there may be a point when something goes pear-shaped and you want to make sure you have documentation. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Next is the dreaded city manager. I mean, uh, <laughs> Al Braithway. Consider the city manager. Congratulations, by the way, on your first year of being city manager. Yes. Now, but it's it's looking good. <laughs> Touch. That was that, that was mostly key up for the, for our vote. So, yeah. Uh, I assume what was the you got everything all above and. Yes, sir. Okay. Need a motion. <laughs> so moved. Second. Motion and a second, and this is as as per the resolution. Is that four percent? Yep. As per the resolution, motion and a second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Thank you. Passes five nothing. Next, but prior to council comments, I'll start with Al. Al actually has a comment prior to council comments. More, really, more of an informational, I guess, item. Yeah, I actually had a couple. Um, some of you may have seen on social media in the recent future an announcement involving a golf cart parade. Um, the announcement is accurate for what is planned, but it has not come to this board yet. And I just wanted to let everybody know that it still requires council approval. It will be on the agenda for November, November 20th. We have been in negotiation with the organizers of it to try and figure out the best way to make it happen. And we're gonna to recommend to council at the next meeting that we use it as a city event. Just want everybody to know because a lot of what's been in social media um, seems to be suggesting that it's a done deal. I think there's a fairly good chance that we will do it, but it still needs to come to council and we'll take care of that on the 20th. So. And, and it's treated probably no different than any other parade or function or you know thing that goes on and that's coordinated through the city, correct? Correct. Okay. Except um, that this was, we'll own this one, I guess, if you will. Right. right. Um, if you can indulge me for two other quick things. Yep. I apologize, but um, in our fire chief candidate process, I wanted to announce and introduce you to the next, how should I describe it? The next interim, the current interim chief is former Lieutenant Renee Neiman, now our acting chief. She will be the uh, interim fire chief, uh, started on November 1st, and she will go to February 28th, but wanted to introduce her to everybody. You'll see her around, and she's been with the, she and I started, I think, in the same day, didn't we? We both with the city for 19 years, so we've been through a lot together, and she's wonderful, and she'll be a great leader. Um, last and, thing. And to that point, I stopped by today, and so I didn't, she told me today, and I, I see you when you drive that truck, and she is just, you know, like him with a, when you say food to, to him. It's not kind of the same reaction, but she said she really loves driving that truck, and so, what, Thursday will be your first week? So, yeah, some adjusting. I, didn't, I, I bet it is fun to drive that thing. I'm sorry. Um, Ginger was here. I just wanted to update the council on uh, Ginger spearheaded an effort to raise some money for the panhandle, and uh, she submitted the money. I'm going to supplement it. We're going to send it to Mariana, which was kind of a city that I had a connection with the city manager okay. to. Um, one of our streets employees, Ray Dixon, has also taken supplies to Fort Walton Beach to help out his brother. Um, we are still actually talking to both uh, Cottondale and Mariana, and um, we'd still be willing to listen to anybody who's got a connection that wants us to consider doing something for them, but I promised council that we would do something, and that's kind of where we're at at this point. Perfect. Awesome. That's great. Thank you, sir, for indulging me. Yep, no problem. Council comments. Mayor, or Council Member Beaverland. <laughs> I just almost made you mayor. Thank you, sir. <laughs> First, I want to compliment the uh, city, and some people have complimented the city, is that after the small tornado went down, Arlington on the south side of the street I know. and not the north side of the street that uh, staff was out there doing work and that's uh, and that's to be complimented the uh, don't forget Veterans Day that's extremely important extremely important I want to say who am I going to say this to? I'm going to say this to you or to him. This, nice. This, nice. Is, this is incredible. If anybody wants to know what I'm talking about, you can come up here and look at it after the meeting, but you can't take it. <laughs> and other than that, keep, uh, 
keep Kathy in your prayers. Yep, absolutely. They're going to... Several different things. Yeah. I, I, I went five and, a half, five and a half years to mop it for the same thing that Kathy's husband's going through now, but except, except they caught mine and immediately and they didn't catch his, her husband immediately and he's going through something that I thank God I didn't have to go through. So, so keep her in your prayers yep. and Absolutely. her husband and, and thank you who you are. Thank you. Councilmember McGee. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Happy belated birthday, Doug. I don't know how I let that slip I am through just, my in the heart last meeting. It's crushed. If you would stay in the country once in a while, maybe. I <laughs> wouldn't have missed it, but I did. So I And it was a big one. 35. <laughs> <laughs> wow. For the 10th time. A, typic, yeah. a typical politician. Yeah. yeah. He tells stories. <laughs> but we have another birthday this evening, too. I believe if Mike's working. He's not working. His Big birthday. Did you get him here? His I thought birthday. I was. I was gonna say he was gonna be committed. We were looking. He jumped to work. <laughs> <laughs> but happy birthday to Mike Hurley and all he does for us. Yep. And that's all I have. Councilmember Strachey. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, I wanted to just what Jerry said. You said everything I was gonna say. The only thing I want to say is just be there for Veterans Day. It's gonna be a great day. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Reichner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, too, was going to echo uh, Veterans Day. It's going to be a great event. It always is. Please make it out. Congratulations, Renee. And um, Steve is always in my prayers. So that's all I got, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I don't have a lot. Looking forward to the Veterans Day. Congratulations, Renee. Um, and other than that, you know, I hope that everybody exercised their right. I stood out there today at the voting uh, poll and I even took pictures of an opponent of some of somebody that we all like um, because they wanted a picture with the, somebody that voted. And so I helped out with that because it's really not about that. The, today is the day that it's about getting out and, and voting. So uh, I, I think we're going to find out that there was a record turnout uh, countrywide for this election. So the dynamics are incredibly incredible on both sides, uh, both the Democrat and Republican. So it'll be. As with the presidential election, we all woke up a bit discombobulated with that, with the results. So who knows what uh, what tonight and tomorrow will hold, and probably a couple days still to come. So for some of these elections, yeah, about 3,500 3, that have to vote out of eligible, and that has never happened. Wow, that is record. Yeah, you think that's what Dang. the number is going to be, Ann? Or do we, we know? I Normally we're about 2,600. No, it was no, it was over 3,000. What? Wow. We'll see if they have the oh, same. Oh, for the presidential, you mean? Turn yeah, but and it's normally like 2,200, is it? What's our? No, it's not that high. 1,000. Is it? I was trying to think back when, well, I haven't run in so long. No, it isn't. It's usually around 1,300, 1,400. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was a big turnout. 1,600 yeah. was a big turnout that I remember. That'll be interesting. So. so anyway, thank you. Anything? Tom, you got anything? Nothing else. Thank you. I already asked you. Kathy, you got anything? Our thoughts and prayers for you and your son-in-law and and everybody, you know, that uh, hopefully that would happen sooner than later, so. Probably happen in the middle of everything else. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as luck would have it, right? Yeah, so if there's nothing else, Gator, good to see you. Judy, even better to see you tonight. Amanda, thank you <laughs> for coming tonight. And uh, we look forward to, we'll work out the logistics um, of, of how it goes. Gator probably can, what I can't remember if it was part of our resolution for the uh, Poet Laureate or what, yeah. as to how that, do you remember, Gator? Mm -hmm. uh, I do poem every First quarter of every year. Is that what it was? I believe that's what it was. Okay. So, yeah, we'll get with you and figure out what it is. And, and that's not limited to that. That's right. just requirement. It can be more than that. The first meeting of every quarter? Is that what you said? Uh, the first, during the first quarter of every year. Oh, okay. One poem, original. Yeah. But that's just a suggestion. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to maybe one each quarter, you know, or, you know, the, whatever you want, however you want to do it, you know, the, this first meeting in the third month of the, you know, so that, so they're spaced. That's all what I'm thinking about. So, okay. Sounds good. Nothing else? No. Meeting adjourned.